is going on HKD? I have not checked in with you for a moment. So let's check in on some things. I'm I'm looking at the charts and they are kind of blowing my mind. And I'm going to tell you what I'm looking at. As always, this is not financial advice. It's just for your entertainment. So let's look at it. We have uh, quite a gap here, which is fine, right? Because we have our trend line down here. So would it make sense to come down to somewhere in the lower eights to be able to fill, uh, fill that in before we move on? Yeah, it would. Um, realistically, as far as the uh, RSI goes that we've been tracking, we're getting our kind of pull back down to this area, which I like to see because we said as far as the RSI typically goes on HKD, we get a severe pullback down to the danger zone before it ever wants to take off. So I'm looking for the pullback down to the danger zone in the RSI where it looks like it's basically done, you know, over with. Right now we are just sitting at it on uh, our normal trend line on the 30 minute Let's look at our one hour. Our one hour has some room down to the downside to be able to even come back to our, you know, our 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 secure trend line that we've been watching. And the daily, the four hour and the daily are kind of grinding their way up, which is interesting. Um, I've honestly, I, I can't say I've seen some sort of setup like this uh, in quite a while. As far as, you know, barcoding and uh, making the slow grind to the upside, it almost looks like it's trying to form a bullish pattern, but I think it's going to give out just because uh, I'm wanting to come back down in here. Now, I don't know if we do or do not have a gap. It's trading view, so, uh, I mean, sometimes the wicks just do not show up. Um, I might be wrong as far as having a gap, but I don't know that I'm wrong as far as wanting to come back in and, f you know, at least test our trend line. But we do have support right here around $8.30. $8.30 could be a quick trip back down to the trend line. So that's that's another reason why I'm thinking there could be a little bit of downside before we see the slow grind al algorithm, whatever is happening, barcoding that's just moving us slowly, slowly up to the upside. Um, so if we lose that eight dollars and thirty cents, I do think there's going to be a test down here somewhere in the lower eights. If we don't lose the eight dollars and thirty cents, and we continue to the upside above eight dollars and forty four forty five cents, I. I I think we could see a little bit of the spike action to the upside. Um, it's pretty interesting to see where we sit and how this movement is happening, even though we are barcoding. And, um, you know, I, I still have my full position here. I think I'm actually green because I've, I've added to my position in the meantime, whenever we were thinking there could be a deeper shakeout. And again, if this was the deeper shakeout and it's going to start making its way back up, that's okay. But if there is another deeper shakeout, um, that's that's okay too. You know, we're still watching down here around the seven dollar and seventy five cent range just for a double bottom. But so far, the trend line's holding us up. The trend line is acting as support. The trend line is being our friend. So we can't be too mad about the whole situation. Some of you guys are probably averaged way higher and um you know the that's why i stress having a trading plan before you get into it because it's easier to lose a buck or whatever on the trade and get back into it later than it is to be able to try to continuously average down at any point you think might be some sort of uh area just because it's lower than what you're holding uh I'm really looking for the grind back to $9.27. Whether it takes time and wants to be a slow grind back to $9.27 or if it wants to be a pop, I don't care either way. But this pink line right here is our wick line where we continue to just see the wick and then it just consolidates to a lower and lower point. Um, 
we don't want to continue to see the wick point get rejected and continue to drive us down. So what I like is the fact that our fib line and our wick line are sitting out there towards the end of the week. So, you know, Thursday, Friday, if if it wants to continue to make the grind up or if it wants to come all the way out here to Tuesday of next week, we're going to see if this trend line can continue to support us to Tuesday of next week, which would get us above this wick line that we've been you know, just spiking up to and then quickly rejecting from, that'd be okay to be able to get some sort of new reference point that we are going to be able to spike to and reject from. Uh, I, if it wants to fall below this trend line, then obviously, you know, we're we're looking at a pretty deep retracement, a, low, a lower low than what we said before at that 774, 70, 75 range. And we're coming back down to um, just retest support level of our breakout that we had. So keep an eye on how it's moving. But at the same time, there's really no negatives that I'm seeing until, you know, below eight bucks at this point. Eight bucks, then we check 775. At 775, be thinking what you want to do with your position. Do you want to see if there's a deeper shakeout? and see if you know they want to get rid of some last remaining people that are still holding on clinging and then also be watching to see if it wants to grind this trend line and get us out of that strong wick rejection area so those are the two points um, if we go into tuesday and we are trading above eight dollars and 75 cents with some strength that gives me hope right we're going into next week if we are going into tuesday and we're way down here below 775 then that gives me uh, a little bit of inclination that we might be <laughs> I, I mean we're definitely going lower at that point so keep an eye on it but at the same time um where would be the trigger point about eight bucks right now so I think $8, if it wants to pull back, is going to be our deciding factor as to if this continues to make the spike and grind, spike and grind, spike and grind, or if it makes the rejection and deeper consolidation. Also have your, um, I, I know you guys have this drawn up already, your RSI trend lines, because these are what we're watching. We're watching patterns. We're watching where things kind of happen when they kind of happen and these are the only inclinations that we have is kind of our rsi as far as the patterns go and we we never know when it's going to happen or where it's going to happen it just spikes whenever it wants to spike so keep an eye on that i don't know if vortex is correct but as far as i can tell the cost of borrow average is not too high for the utilization being as high as it is 98.95 percent i would think that these shares would be considerably higher um i i do loan out my shares uh, on everything i don't care if if market makers and shorts are going to put me in pain I'm going to collect some interest. It's just the way I trade. Everybody has their own tr trading plan. Everybody has their own ideas about what's happening. But at the same time, I protect my accounts. I encourage you guys to protect your accounts. I encourage you to make money wherever you can in the markets, whether it's you know flipping it for pennies, whether it's uh, loaning out your shares, whether it's selling covered calls. And I don't care how you do it. It doesn't affect my play. Um, it doesn't affect anybody's play. Retail is along for the ride. And we just play along with big money. Unless one of you guys have millions or billions of dollars. But if you did, this play would have already taken off. So I'm assuming nobody has millions or billions of dollars. So we're playing with what big money wants to do and we're playing how big money plays big money loans out their shares it's it's as simple as that
you know it, it it really is so do what you have to do to make money while you wait in the meantime you're not affecting the play i can almost guarantee you that you're not affecting the play and at the same time let's continue to see how this grinds because i've never seen a one hour chart in the way that hkd is rolling right now and it really has my interest um we've been seeing it shoot up and then you know barcode and shoot down and barcode shoot up and barcode shoot down and barcode so i'm not ruling out either potential right now just because of where we sit as far as what the trend line below us is and our spike overhead but at the same time just see if we can make that slow grind so we're looking for a slow grind to about eight dollars and 75 cents or we're looking for a loss of the seven dollar and 75 cent trend line so we're right there in between right now it's eight dollars 34 cents in the after hours let's go from there i mean it's it's interesting it's looking okay we're not doing a uh, cup and handle by any means we're doing a cup with more consolidation so somebody's figuring out how to either get as much as they can consolidate and get their position and uh, or they're figuring out how uh, they can eliminate the buyers that are soaking up the sell the supply to be able to push it to the downside we really don't know it's any man's game right now and we're just here watching waiting protect your accounts doesn't matter which way it goes i'll catch you guys in the next one as always stay golden people and may your accounts stay green